Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Point with Playdate. Today, we're joined by the one and only Sammy Adams, insanely talented singer, songwriter, musician. You've worked with top industry professionals. You've been making it real in the industry for a while. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. Do you want to just start and kind of introduce yourself, talk about yourself personally, your music, for anyone in our audience who might not be as familiar with you? Yeah, uh, my name's Samuel Adams Wisner. I go by Sammy Adams. Used to go by Sam Adams. Um, always kind of been into music, started playing piano from a really young age, and then uh, through high school and college, kind of using all the resources like Fruity Loops and Logic Pro and Pro Tools and all that stuff. Um, playing the piano, you could basically click on any instrument. Um, so I really got into producing before I got into like songwriting and actually kind of having like the belief and confidence to become an artist. Um, and then there was just like a, a switch that went off and I was like, instead of selling these beats, I should definitely get on these. Um, and that's how I made Boston's Boy when I was in college and then dropped out and been torn and had a career since. So it's been a, um, been a wild ride. That's awesome. How did you first begin to get into music and kind of realize that making this beats and then eventually going on to perform with them was something that you wanted to do? Um, I kind of, I kind of knew, I was just like in love with the creative process of producing songs. Um, there was like a computer lab at school and like, while I was supposed to be doing labs, I was a hundred percent on like Fruity Loops, just banging away. Um, and then like catching the ear of other people, uh, you know, people were kind of surprised that they were like, yo, you made this bro? And I'd be like, yeah. Um, so basically, it was just like super fun. It was a hobby. Um, obviously it was like a lofty dream because everyone that I talked to, you know, from the ground up was like, the music scene's a tough place to be. Like we even took the EP that went number one um, to like 10 music attorneys in New York and they all shut it down and said it wasn't commercially viable. So um, that kind of like, it sucked at first. And then I was like, Fuck it, I'm just gonna use that for motivation. Um, and then I uh, just stuck with it and like kind of just like fine tuned, you know, the songs that I had and worked on uh, my craft and writing, um, spitting, singing, producing, and uh, I got a break. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have any personal favorites of songs that you've released or songs that you've enjoyed producing the most? Um, One of my favorite songs off Boston's was probably Just Sing. Um, it was a really like random link up with, uh, the group MP3. That's a really like fun summary song. Uh, we shot a video like on Nantucket on the beach, which was super fun. It was like all of our boys. And that's a really good one. Um, all night longer is insane at shows just like sets the place off crazy. So that's a, that's definitely a banger. Um, and then my personal favorites are like off of the homecoming project which is like stop the music waste um and a whole lot of unreleased records so i'm excited for i love it in 2022 yeah so i'd love to talk more about all night longer obviously that one did really well took off on tiktok recently i yep. feel definitely a staple at college house parties across the country what does that look like for you um, it's crazy because, you know, it's like everything from uh, being a rapper to kind of like going more pop when I was with Sony RCA. Um, the song was just like we, we kind of like kind of like took the drums from Gary Glitter a little bit and changed them, which was like an anthemic song for like stadiums. And, you know, it, like right as we wrote it, we knew we had like a monster on our hands. but. It's crazy because like, I think I think it came out in 2012 and I think RIA start, like started counting the sales in 2016. Um, so it was like a full four year grace period where like, you know, we were unsure how it was doing um, and then it just went platinum. And like you said, it's kind of like a staple in the college scene. So when you see these videos of like kids in a room, like the ceiling is literally like <laughs> bouncing up and down. Um, 
it's an amazing feeling because you know like i said this is all kind of a pipe dream to get started and um you know definitely uh feels great to have a song that you know has been literally out for almost a decade and people are still ripping to it yeah that's crazy especially with the power of TikTok, like bringing back all of this older music you know that people might not have listened to when it came out and now it's charting everything yeah. <laughs> it's crazy and it's, it's it's cool it's like you know i think I think TikTok and all these, all the, you know, social media apps and stuff are, there's like some people that are like salty about it. And it's like, it's just a, it's just a new wave. And you gotta, um, you gotta use everything you can these days as an artist uh, to get your stuff where you want it to be. Um, if you think TikTok's corny and it's not for you, that's fine. But at the same time, there's still a reason you should upload your original songs and all that stuff so people can use them. Um, but I think TikTok is a shit and there's so much funny content and it puts people on to new music, even working at like Apple Music. There's tons of songs that we probably wouldn't have had on our playlist if it wasn't for, you know, viral trending songs on TikTok. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of going off TikTok. Do you think that's something that's going to be here to stay? Do you think it's like a passing phase for music? Obviously, it's becoming more and more relevant in the music scene, whether you're an artist or producer or working in the music business industry. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I I think I think TikTok's basically like it's here to stay. Um, you know, I think that it's unique enough that it's different from Instagram and Twitter uh, and Facebook. But at the same time, um, it's just insane to see people's growth on it because like Instagram's pretty hard to get verified. And same with Twitter and I think TikTok now. Um, but it's like, it's crazy because it's kind of like the new Vine. Um, and like, there's so many more things you can do with it. Uh, just like as, as like user friendly as possible, in my opinion. Um, so I think it'll be around for a while. There will probably be another TikTok in the next like two to five years that takes over and, you know, those fans move over to that. Uh, but I definitely think it, has a staple in in the entertainment industry and music. Yeah, that's awesome. So that was kind of obviously opportunities that you've taken advantage of. I'm curious if there's been any obstacles that you were able to overcome and that allowed you to kind of push through and come out on top. Um, Yeah, tons. I mean, there's kind of like a whole like whirlwind of stories. And, you know, it's it's the music industry is like any other entertainment business where there's sharks, there's people that, you know, are coming for you. And sometimes not, a, you know, not everyone is going to love what you do. Um, and that like, at first I really didn't care at all. Um, you know, having kind of being catapulted into success and like, I always hated people saying it was like an overnight, like success story because like we literally toured in like sleeping in our cars and bringing speakers to set up shows for like you know a year and a half before we actually did a real venue um but the the real obstacles were like figuring out where to sign a deal and then once you're in a deal with a major keeping your uh keeping your creativity and like keeping your like creative flow because you're obviously pitching these records to your president or your chairman and like head of promo. So you're kind of writing songs for you still, but also there's like that red line and a little bit of red tape that you have to like kind of cater to um, what what they're looking for and what they want from you as an artist and where they think you're going. So that was a little difficult to navigate. Um, being an indie artist in general, I think is pretty difficult. Um, especially now like it's crazy i know a lot of people say the same thing like i can't imagine having like instagram or TikTok when you're in high school or like you know when you're even in college um because it's it, there's a lot of pressure on that stuff um you know for likes and for people to you know it's it's an easy place for people to come on and be keyboard killers and you know keyboard warriors which like you know if you ain't got haters you ain't doing it right so <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Kind of going off to your initial like takeoff to success, how did that affect you? Obviously, it was pretty full speed ahead and you've been continuing to see that success since then. But going back to when it first started to hit you, what were your initial thoughts on that and how did it affect you personally as well as your music? 
Oh, it was crazy. Um, it was like, it was so satisfying um, for like all the time that, you know, me and my manager put into it. Um, but it was, it like felt so surreal. Uh, even being on like the plane, I remember it was like the first Delta, first American or Delta plane that had Wi-Fi. And so we were checking the charts while we were flying to LA and then we landed like right as we went number one on iTunes and like beat out Wayne, who's like one of my favorite rappers and like DJ Khaled's project. So it was insane because like right as we landed, my manager is like, this is back in the Blackberry days. His phone went crazy. Like it was like boom, 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 like 200 emails. And then like the next day, you know, like eating breakfast at Jimmy Iovine's house, going to meet with the biggest executives in the game. Um, after, you know, two years ago, these people were like, your music isn't good enough, to, you know, for us to take you as a client. So it felt super satisfying, very surreal. Um, and overall, I was just super hyped because it gave us a platform to build off and, you know, it gave us the whole uh, opportunity to tour and to go around the country and, you know, go to Australia, New Zealand, Europe, UK. Um, so it was, it was wild, uh, especially going like zero to a hundred kind of that quick. It's like, it's really all you need is a song or some hype or some buzz around it. Obviously like conspiracy and press and all that stuff uh starts to build on you but at the same time like i said if people are talking about you're doing something right yeah for sure so do you have any unique touring experiences you mentioned touring internationally and i know you've been all over the country whether it be flying or like you mentioned sleeping in the car any yeah. unique or memorable experiences in your years of touring and really just performing live um yeah there was like well uh, like one of one of the most scary moments was like we were playing Lollapalooza and we had like two shows I think at like I think forget where it was like Bottom Lounge and Subterranean and like Chicago and I woke up the day of our Lala show and I didn't have a voice oh, and no. I was like oh my god and like I had to like skip going to the Cubs game with like all the boys and my attorney and like my entire label and attorney and like homies flew in to come see it and it was so stressful and i just like basically got like my throat checked out and i had like what's called a polyp which is basically just like a build up on your vocal cord so i got a shot for it um i got about 70 percent of my voice back and it didn't matter because like the crowd knew all the words and like we we smashed it so that was extremely stressful up until the point where we were on stage. Um, and then just touring in general, like here in New York, Jersey, in the Midwest, like it's crazy to see these older venues. Cause when you play songs that people really like, like the floor is literally like moving like six inches. So it's like amazing. Um, it's amazing to play live for people and kind of see and feel your dreams like coming to life. And also like perfecting your stage presence and how you sound sonically. I think we focused and dialed that in. Um, Cause at first it was a lot of excitement. It was a lot of hype, uh, but the shows only got better from there because, you know, I would watch videos and be like, holy shit, like I need to sound better than this. Uh, but uh, but yeah, there's there's a million stories on tour. We we can tap back into those, but I'm I'm excited to get back on the road. Yeah, of course. You know it's a good show when the floor is shaking like that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> How has touring kind of changed for you um, when you were younger versus kind of going at it? Obviously not now, but hopefully getting back into it soon. Um, what kind of stayed the same and what's different? Um, just just kind of like the practice uh and like using your time wisely to rehearse like i never used to rehearse like before we go on a run now or even do you know a string of shows we rehearse we make sure everything's dialed in so we can have like the production and the music and lights all synced and kind of just like taking better care of myself 
personally, um, when you're like on the road, it's like people think it's all just like go, 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 party, party, party. And you just burn out if you do that. So there's definitely some wild times and some really crazy parties you've been to, but uh, mostly just like kind of maturing and focusing on, you know, sonically sounding as ill as possible, um, which which kind of just you get better and better as you go on. But uh, I would definitely say to my younger self, like focus and on your vocals and take care of yourself because you get sick a lot when you got 11 other people on the bus sleeping together. If one person gets sick, you're basically all getting sick. So um, it's, uh, it's definitely changed in terms of kind of like perfecting how we sound, taking care of each other, and also just dialing in um, the performance factor of it. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any like routine or anything that you go through to kind of calm yourself down before a show or hype yourself up or kind of what's going through your head right before you're jumping on stage? Oh man, it's like if we have like a big college show or a big show that we like sold out recently, well, not recently in terms of the, the COVID era. Yeah. It's extremely easy to just get super hyped because, you know, like hearing a whole crowd just go crazy before you're on stage, like chanting your name. You don't really need much of a pump up, but it always feels amazing when, you know, you know, the people want it and it basically kind of sets the the tone for the entire show because you're like, okay, work, like I'm supposed to be here. And there's other times where there's the crowd like may not know you that well and that's more of a reason for you to dial it in and you know really put on a great show because that's how you gain fans and i think live we've gained a lot of fans because they're like oh i didn't even think i was going to be a fan of this dude and boom hits like a switch so uh that's definitely there's definitely like kind of routines like on the bus we all I didn't we don't do like the praying circle or anything we just kind of hype each other up make sure everything's super proper and dialed in and then just throw down I love it <laughs> kind of going off your fans as you mentioned what does your fan base look like for you um everything from you know 15 year olds to 40 year olds which is crazy I mean there was I think there's fans that were probably 13, 14. Now they're like, you know, 26 to 30. So okay. it's really cool to see like them stick around and, and always tapping in on the music. And I've always told like my younger artists and people that I work with that it's really important for the, for the fans and people to not only love your music, but also fall in love with you as a person. Um, and we always had a really good relationship with our fans and you know treated them like they were part of the fam touring fam you know the music fam they they felt like they were part of this like cult and stuff so it was really cool seeing all of that come together because you you just have no idea when you start out if it's gonna hit or if it's gonna miss and luckily we hit and just kept building it and um they stick they stuck around yeah, that's awesome. Do you have any unique or memorable fan experiences over the years? Oh, tons. Um, it's like so cool because when you're going from, you know, uh, Boston to L.A. to the Midwest to Texas to Canada, it's like people remember like the craziest things about you or like things that you like. So like they'll bring you something and I'm like, how did you know this? And it's like, it's in this song or whatever. So like fans have always like, I don't know, it's they're like so easy to talk to. And, you know, it's I, I feel like they're one of us, like I said before. So uh, fa fan stories, there's been wild, crazy stalkers like following the tour bus. Um, <laughs> which gets a little wild. And then there's also just, you know, the, the cooler part about the fans is like, someone ripped my necklace off once, I think it was in Chicago, and like a bracelet that was like for a friend of mine that passed away. And 
I remember his name was Matt Haas, and he literally found the bracelet and gave it to me at the next Chicago show because um, he knew how much it meant to me. So that that was like a fire moment for me because like these people really care about you. You know, it's not just like, OK, I'm going to see Sammy Adams because I'm waiting for the dude that's on after him. Uh, they're, they're like really true, awesome, loyal fans. So I'm, I'm super, super lucky to have uh, a fan base that, you know, not only is like caring, but also they're just so passionate. Yeah, that's really awesome. Kind of switching gears a little bit. What are some essential tips or advice that you would give to other up and coming artists kind of starting out, launching into their career? What are some things that you wish you would have known when you were first starting out? Ooh, good question. Um, I, for my younger self, I would, I would just focus, you know, solely on the music that you want to make. Um, don't worry about like all the other people and other people's opinions because there's just some people you're never going to win over and you got to get over that. And it, that bothered me for a while that like, I was like, well, why don't they like this record? And then you start to kind of make records that maybe they're into and you still don't get the fan. So, um, you know, just put your head down, keep grinding and, you know, eventually you'll build something beautiful. But for people that are just starting out, uh, it's just about consistency and dedication. If you really want this, you have to work, 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 work. It might take you 50 to 100 records before you get that record where you're like, I could play this 20,000 times you know, in my career. So it's like focus on what you're in control of and try to just brush a brush the shot, brush aside, excuse me, um, the naysayers and, and people that kind of try to tear you down because in most cases they're going through some shit and they're taking it out on you or it's like jealousy or maybe they just don't like your music, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Just put your head down, keep working and, and, uh, and find your, find like your sound. I think that's the most important part. There's such an oversaturated market now for musicians and, you know, this like new pop rap kind of singy rap melodic vibe that it's, it's important to have like your distinct, unique sounds. Um, and I, I'm still working on mine because we've, went from dance music to pop, to hip hop, to, you know, almost like dubstep, harder electronic stuff. Uh, so it's it's crazy. We've kind of been all over the map. So we never, never pigeonholed myself per se, in terms of like just being a rapper, or just being a producer of a certain kind of music. So keep your parallels open, always look for opportunities and just be hungry. Like you got to get out there and really try to make relationships and make things work because it's not just gonna come to you like it, that just doesn't happen you got to be you got to be a hustler got to got to grind for it yeah for sure so obviously you've been working at this for many years you've had a whirlwind of experiences how has this kind of affected you personally uh i i think personally i'm i'm pretty stoked um you know it's like i never really thought i'd have you know plaques and platinum records and you know a million fans so it's really uh it's really affected my my life in terms of just changing the entire landscape of you know what i was gonna do i have no when people ask me what else i would be doing if i wasn't doing music i really have no idea and people are like come on like you gotta know something and i'm like i don't know maybe like maybe acting maybe something else like maybe like an agent or something but it's like Music basically saved my life. It saved me from getting a nine to five. So God bless on that. <laughs> yeah, no one wants the nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, you've obviously had a lot of collaborations and working with other artists. What's your favorite? Do you have any fun stories from that? Oh yeah, tons. Um, I would say like probably working with Pharrell was like a dream come true because I was always a huge you know fan of him and Chad and like the Neptunes so it's like that story is crazy because like I was supposed to have a day with Pharrell like we ended up working for like three days and 
made some really great music that the label didn't necessarily like, but it's such a cool like like milestone in my career that like I got to chill with Pharrell Williams at his studio and like meet his kid and his wife. And then from there on, you know, working with like Enrique and uh, Currency and so many other people, like it's it's been such a cool ride, but it's also like Pharrell stands out to me because like he met my fiance and I think they were at a party or something for some opening with him and another artist, um, art gallery. He was like surrounded by all these people and he like went out of his way to go say hi to her and always is like inviting us to things in New York when, when he's there. So just stand up dude and so talented. Like literally I, I was so tempted if I knew it wouldn't piss him off to just like literally hit record on my phone because everything he says is like, just a subtle little drop of a gem, um, especially as an up and coming artist um, at the time. So that's definitely the coolest experience. And now getting more into the songwriting and writing for other people, it's uh, it kind of just flows off of my of, off of my tongue because it like I'm so particular about stuff that I put out. And if I don't love it, I got to make it perfect to the point where I'm happy with it. And I really do love the song otherwise sometimes i won't even finish it or sometimes i'll just you know put it to the side and if i get writer's block it's like you know whatever fuck it i'll i'll deal with it later and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but the the pharrell link up was definitely one of the highlights of of my music career for sure yeah that's so awesome all right, I have one last question for you. If you had to describe your music and your personal artist style in three words or less, what would they be? Mm, super fucking lit. I love it. Nah. <laughs> awesome, well, thank you so much. Do you have any kind of closing remarks for our audience watching you today? No, just what's goody. Go follow me on Instagram, at Sammy Adams, at Sammy Adams on Twitter. If you're on Twitch, I'll be kicking off my Twitch campaign with them officially on August 1st. It's official Sammy or Sammy Adams official on Twitch. So come chill. We'll be talking music, playing new music. Uh, we're going to have this whole thing where um, fans and people can send in music and we can do like critiques and reviews and stuff. Obviously, positive criticism only a very like hate free space um, on that. And that's about it check some of the music uh new single drip is out now and new song coming out in a month perfect so exciting we will have all of that linked below you can go find it follow sammy on everything this is april with playdate thank you so much for being here and tuning in today thank you